This video is brought to you by our channel partner, Rayboot. Their software allows you to fix a ton of issues on iOS. It'll let you upgrade or downgrade iOS as a whole. Enter recovery mode. It has 150 plus issues for iOS that can be resolved. It'll reset your iOS devices, permanently erase data if you need, and a ton of other options if your phone is frozen, if it is stuck in different modes you don't want it to be, if there's excess battery drain, boot loops, it'll take care of it all for you. Thanks for partnering with us on today's video. So with Apple today officially announcing their announcement date for the iPhone 17 series and their fall event in general, we wanna give you a side-by-side -side look of what you can expect with the imminent public release of iOS 26. And obviously the big takeaway here is going to be that design language from iOS 18, in this case 18.6.2, running on our iPhone 16e to iOS 26 running on our 16 Pro Max. And we already know, Liquid Glass is the star of the show. It could not be more apparent than your home screen or lock screen in general, but the animations are different and there are some new useful features here. So first things first, obviously on the lock screen, like we said, you have all those options to expand out your clock, make it look bigger, have a little bit more of a depth design, the whole wallpaper experience and your customization is a little different here where you have your widgets at the bottom instead of having to have them pinned up top. We're not going to go into all these details. Spatial scene is another option. Keep in mind if you do generate a spatial scene, it does give you that depth effect as you can see it moving right there with that liquid glass clock right in front of it. I think it looks really good. It does it really just does look more modern. So we'll leave this as it is right here, just say done, and we won't talk about this much longer. We'll go ahead and set that, and we're good to go. Now, once you swipe in, nothing else can be more apparent than those new animations. As you can see, they all jiggle a little bit. There was no animation on an iPhone 18. It is just pretty static. And then obviously the big one is the control center. So totally different design here, much more translucent of an effect here, not as liquid glassy as it was in the initial betas, but yeah. And as you can see that one random bug there, the first time we swipe from the control center is still present. This seems to be something just impacting our devices, but just wanna let you know if you are experiencing that, it is here for me as well. Aside from that, the camera got a huge upgrade, icon looks aside. You can see all of the main controls that you used to have very visible right on your screen are now tucked away under your video and photo settings. You now have to swipe on them to select which option you want. And again, just look at how nice these visual elements are here. Again, kind of weird. I've talked about this in our other videos, but now if you want to get to your shortcuts and change some settings here, you can either tap on the actual mode you're in. You can actually tap on this icon up here it's, they're, they're just all over the place. It's very interesting and really repetitive and redundant, but this is what Apple has decided to go with. I definitely don't mind it at all. I think it still looks pretty good. As far as everything else, all the animations are just so smooth here. You do have that new effect when you launch an app, how it launches and kind of tucks back in, especially on the dock. Whereas again, if you had this, it was just more of a gradual decrease instead of that genie effect that you saw here. So we'll launch them side by side really quick and then go ahead and swipe away. Hard to see unless you're specifically looking for it. But yeah, that is something else present. And then obviously in settings, one of the big changes that I really like, especially if you are always curious about your battery and always want good battery life, we now have an updated design here. And under battery health, you can see exactly where we're at on this phone. We don't use the 16E too much. So yeah, that's still at 100% as opposed to the 366 cycle counts at 95% capacity here. But as far as power modes go, now you do have adaptive power. And we actually finally saw that first notification today that it was actually in use if you have those notifications turned on. So pretty neat to see nonetheless. And speaking of battery, I have to say it is still a little bit inconsistent and it is definitely not quite as good as it was on iPhone uh, running 16, or excuse me, 18.6. But again, hopefully that'll be changed. And I do just wanna let you know as well, keep in mind, while it might not feel maximized for these phone models, the iPhone 17 will be running these right out of the box. 
and could even see a better boost in performance. And speaking of performance, let's go to Geekbench really quick, and I do want to show you exactly how those are running. So, as you can see in our history, we did just run one today, and you can see under public beta 5 or beta 8 for developers, we're at 3456, multi-core, or excuse me, single core and multi-core score is 8311, whereas here, if you actually check, granted, again, we're not comparing devices, uh, apples to apples and devices, you are getting a little bit lower of a score here on 18.6.2. But yeah, we know messaging app has new backgrounds. Everything kind of flows a little bit more. All platforms are kind of uniform now with that liquid glass design, including your Apple Watch and Vision Pro and all that. Messages apps obviously do have screen messaging now. You have polls, group chats, have those new typing indicators, visual intelligence, on Apple intelligent uh, applicable devices, have now screen context it, with cre uh, screenshots commands. The music app in general just looks so much nicer if you really compare it. And I will pull this one up for you guys to take a quick look at. I mean, just look at how more modernized this looks. It really does feel archaic having to go back to 18.6 after using iOS 26 for a number of months. It's just so much smoother here as well. You have live translation for messaging and all of that. So definitely a lot of nice quality of life features in iOS 26. So one last thing I want to talk about before we go, and that is going to be the official release date. And as you can see, today is August 26th. Apple has announced the announcement for August 9th, which means we can assume we will receive the RC on that date or release candidate version for developers. With the public build going live the 15th or 16th, most likely the 15th, with the actual iPhones, the new 17 series devices, Apple Watches, all that, right on the 19th, which is that following Friday. So let me know in the comments down below, what do you guys think? How are you feeling about these new betas, iOS 26 as a whole, and how the next quality of years will be going for Apple? Thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Peace.